Uh, you guys, I'm so excited for our last call in the summer call series tonight. Uh, one of my favorite people in the like whole world is joining us tonight, Lori Sherman. Uh, Lori and I have been I, I battle buddies, best friends, all of the above, and we met through Isogenics, you guys. Um, um, Lori and her husband, Andy, and my husband, Dan, um, and I really got to know Lori and Andy at a Isogenic celebration in San Diego, California, and we kind of just went for it, and we went for it together, and um, it has been the most beautiful gift and journey um, to not only have had the experience of Isogenics, but to have done it with Lori, and I'm so excited she's talking about what, one of my favorite topics, but also I know one, a topic she's super passionate about. And something that we really lived out together was uh, we started to dream and dream big. And um, I'm so excited that she's going to talk about that tonight. So Lori, I'm going to turn it over to you. Yay. Thank you, Julie, for the beautiful intro. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Lori Sherman. If you don't know me, that's my name. <laughs> We've been with Isogenics since July 2013. And so that is we just hit our eight-year mark for joining Isogenics, which is awesome. Um, I'm going to go through my story first um, and then kind of share what we're going to talk about. So tonight's all about visions and setting intentions and dreaming big. And this is something I'm so passionate about and I was so pumped when Isogenics fell into my life that it brought my dreams back to the surface and allowed me to dream big and to talk about it and to also be aware that not everyone dreams big, <laughs> right? So I love that it really gave me a full picture. Um, and then knowing like, who do you share with, who do you don't? And then also building that thick skin that I can have dreams, whether people agree with them or not, right? Or whether they're running for dreams or not. So really quickly, if you want to in the chat, just write how many years you've been in an ice or in isogen. I'd love to see how many years you've been here or if it's a couple months or a couple of weeks, um, I would love to see that. I'm just gonna pull it up quick. Yay, 10, seven, four, three, a little over a year. Awesome. Yes, Julie. Yes, love it. Perfect. Okay, one more thing. How many people actually have, one, have you ever made a vision board? You're gonna have two questions. So have you ever made one? Second question, do you have a current one that actually means something to you? So sometimes you do it when you first join, you're like, oh, this is fun, but you don't actively like have it plastered. Yes. Okay, cool. We're going to do some fun stuff. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Yes, Barbie, that's huge. So really first, I'm going to go over my story quickly for those of you that don't know it, and then we're going to walk um, walk the line of dreaming big together. So we joined July 2013. I want you to know that my husband joined first. It's very rare in isogenics that a husband joins first for products. Um, it was our best friends. I've known my best friends since first grade. They were doing it. I had just had my second baby and I had the mama brain where I was like, I don't, I can't even comprehend what you're talking about. I'm going to still eat my chips and salsa and my carrots, even though I should have said yes to nutrition. Um, but Andy said yes. And he bought, I think he bought the basic pack that time because no one, no one showed us um, the pace setter pack at that time, right? And, or the president's pack or the value pack that we call it now. No one showed us that. No one, we probably would have bought one of those, but no one even told us. So he started with that and I watched him. He lived in my house. He's my husband, right? Transform over 30 days. And he went for losing weight. We were already using a different protein, switched to isogenics and he had amazing results. Physical pounds lost in 30 days that he was not getting before. And so that was an easy swap because it was like, what well, wasn't that other protein that we bought from a group um, that wasn't giving results? And then he put isogenics in mixed with fasting and he dropped, I'll say over 10 pounds in a month to be compliant. Um, he is an engineer. So just know he followed it to a T because he wanted to test it. So back in the day when we had cleanse days and it was almonds or an almond as a snack for six, he literally had six almonds and that was it. So know that there are people that love, he loved that. That was a thrill for him to follow it and it worked. So we were hooked. I saw him transform. I loved his energy. Um, if you knew Andy before, his eyes were always kind of like, he just looked tired all the time. And I remember one day at dinner, like we were sitting across the table, I'm like, your eyes are like open. Like he looked alert. And if you've been to isogenic events, you know the power of like the minerals and the trace minerals, the nutrients. And it was like, oh, like he just looked alert and like, 
present, you know, versus the burnt out Dan. And so that's what caught my energy was, or caught my attention was his energy. Because again, my second baby. And so he would just take a shake packet off to work and, you know, so easy. So I slowly started trying the products and then I fell in love with them. So my first two products was the shake and Ionic Supreme because mamas have stress or women have stress. <laughs> and so to calm those two things to make me feel alert and alive, but then also reduce stress was key. So we became lovely product customers. We were ordering 100 BB a month. No one again told us to have two accounts. I say this because if you haven't talked to your customers and they're ordering over 200 BB in a single account, make them split it because they can save BB or earn more BB. Um, and so we went to our first event because here's the thing. When I first joined Isogenics, my enrolling sponsor put me in a product group and a business group without asking me right? Which was fine. That was kind of a thing back then, right? Like people just added. Um, they did welcome notes, but I didn't know what I didn't know. And so when I was in this business group, I never commented, I never liked, I kind of hung out there because we were happy product users, but I would see people posting rank advancements. I would see people posting their paycheck or their visa card at the time, but I could see people were making money. At the time, I didn't need to, I didn't want to, whatever. Uh, but I knew people were making money with ICGX, which was key. Uh, then something in my life happened. My son got, my older son got old enough for preschool. And so I was like, if I don't have to go back to a day job and I can just make enough to pay for preschool, that would be amazing. Um, let me say in the meantime, my sponsor kept calling me and I knew that he wanted me to go to events and I didn't want to when we were happy customers. So don't give up on those people. Um, but eventually something in my life changed that I knew exactly where to go to make money. Does that make sense? So he had planted enough seeds. He had me in the business group so that when I had a need of money, I went there. Does that make sense? And so I remember calling um, my upline gen buyer and I just said, Hey, I don't need to make a lot of money. I just need to make $130 a month. That was my preschool. It was two days a week at church, half days. Um, and $130 a month may not seem like a lot to you, but maybe to someone in your downline, $130 would change their life. Because I want you to know over the course of eight years, I made multiple six figures total, which just blows my mind. I still laugh, like I came for preschool budget for like two years and now like I've been able to be home. And so I just want you to always make sure you're asking the right questions to your customers. Because if you're vision casting too big and they just need a little fix, get them there first so that that builds their belief then they can go up to $500 a month so that they can go up to a thousand, right? So they can go to 10,000 a month. And I say that knowing because I've done those numbers, right? I've earned that in a month. So I want you to know that, that that's possible, right? So even if you haven't done it, you know people, there's plenty of people on this call that have earned 10,000 or more in a month. I know that, I know the people on the call, right? And so know that that's a real possibility. I want that to be in your belief system, whether you've done it or not. So I'm gonna fast forward. I went to my first event, it was a super Saturday. And I was hooked. They talked about vision boards. It was Dave MacArthur. If you haven't heard of him, Mechanic to Millionaire. And he, I was like, what is this? <laughs> like people dreaming. And then they had the roadmap to executive. And no one you have invite the right people to events, they'll get it. And I've learned this the hard way over years. People either get it or they don't, right? Like either the people that are on fire, they're gonna go and run with it, whether I fully hold their hands or not. And I've done a lot of hand holding, which I love. But at a certain point, I have to let go to see if they can do it on their own. Does that make sense? When they've done enough events, they've done enough Zoom calls, I'm like, all right, I'm going to watch if they fly, right? And I believe in them that I've done enough for them. Um, so with that, I was like, okay, I can do this. If it takes me a year to get to executive, cool. And we went running and we ran and I hit executive in six months because I was motivated. Because my why was to stay home with my kids. And I know not everyone has kids. So my goal tonight is... One, I want you to dream, but what is that goal that actually motivates you? And this is from learning of coaching. We have over 3,000 people on our team, and I've done a lot of this. And people will say one thing that motivates them or it's on their vision board, but if it's not getting their button gear, I start to realize that's not actually their goal. Because if it was, they'd be hustling. Does that make sense? Hustling with intention, not like a crazy hustle and a burnout, but like they'd be really, really focused. And for those of us that have been around five, seven, 10, 12 years, that's why I would say, do you have a current one? Like what's motivating you today, right? And so know that there's seasons of it. Know that people, whether this is for you to take or as you're coaching, if you have newbies on your team, 
really see like, hey, is this still your active why in the season or has it changed, right? Because a lot of times we're like, hey, do you have a car payment you wanna pay off? Hey, do you have this? We ask these questions, but they're paying it anyway. So if it's already a bill that it's like, it's covered, right? Is it really a strain or is it just covered and it's not gonna motivate them? Does that make sense? Um, mine was, if I did build isogenics for 130 a month, then I'd have to go get a job at a Starbucks, right? Or a Target, which again is fine. I would totally do it, um, but I got to choose and I wanted to choose isogenics. Does that make sense? Um, and there's no right or wrong. You just have to ask the right questions. One, to yourself, if you're in that season of trying to figure out why you're building. Um, or two, when you have people join you, make sure you really know their deep why, right? Um, so moving forward, I just want to say that I went to that event in um, February, my super Saturday. I went to ICU Minneapolis. If you hear this, events are key, which I know has been hard the last two years, but keep plugging in. I went to ICU and Kathy Cooper was there and that was like the big stage of an ICU and they go over everything. And I remember at the end of the event, they always talk about the next event. And so after that event was celebration, which is their largest event of the year, it was gonna be in San Diego and Kathy Cooper shared a story. And she said, I had a person come up to me once and said, ah, oh, Kathy, I'm not sure I can afford, you know, the next event. And Kathy simply said in Kathy's style, she said, that's okay, our leaders will be there. Can you imagine Kathy Coover saying, that's okay if you don't come, our leaders will be there. She, Kathy knows that she knows that she knows that leaders show up at events, whether no one has to ask them. Does that make sense? And so when I heard that, my neighbor Deanne was with me, my friend Heather was like, we're going. Like, yes, we want to lead a team. And I remember texting Andy there. I'm like, hey, we're going to San Diego. And he's like, buy me a ticket. And that's the event where I met Julie. Isn't that kind of fun? And at that big celebration is where we saw like corporate isogenics on a grand scale. And for me, I have a business background and I needed to see that for my belief to go to the next level. In my head, I pictured isogenics as like, oh, that's cute. We sell shakes. Like I'm being very real. Like, oh, I can make a couple hundred extra bucks a month, which is great. It allowed me to stay home, but I didn't have the belief in like the company because I hadn't visualized it or seen it or experienced it with the business background. So when I got to celebration, my anchor was like plopped and anchored. It was like, game on <laughs> like this is a legit company it's just not you know women and men you know how we can say like tossing shakes over a car there's like there's a bigger vision right there's more um science and research which that is not my realm but i appreciate it when they talk about it i'm like cool i trust that but i don't retain it all <laughs> and so i want you to know that too like believe the science that's there because they have over 30 scientists on staff um and so after that, we kept running. I was dreaming bigger. And so at that celebration and other events, we picked running partners. And I'm going to recap this at the end of like your main steps. So if you feel like it's a story mixed with tidbits, that's what it is. It's a story mixed with tidbits. But at the end, I'm going to anchor you in itemized detail. So we went running and Julie and Dan, we met them. We were in like the group area in the main event and we're like hey we kind of hung out and we're like do you want to be partners because here is the massive tip you can't do this business alone you just can't you have to find someone one with the same drive that doesn't go flaky <laughs> that can call you out and you can call them out and you actually stick to your calls and i say this to the people that want to build like good businesses if you're here just for like pibs and that that's you don't need a running partner for that you just have fun and earn your pibs and that's a great thing too um, but if you're really wanting to create a consistent part-time full-time residual income you need those anchor buddies even just one but you need to interview them and say hey this is the season i am setting intentions and with whole with kelly's whole thing of the harvest coming i hope and pray that you're being intentional and reach out to someone that's in isogenics and say, I'm looking for a battle buddy. Here's my expectation, right? Because this is your business. So you don't have to feel bad like, oh, am I being like, am I being a red? Am I being too like, no, that's what you need to run hard, right? And if someone's like, nah, I can't commit. You're like, awesome. Like <laughs> that's, you want to partner with the right people. And I always say, if you try to partner in groups of three, it never works because there's just, it's just gets flaky. But if it's one-on-one, -on -one, it's hardcore accountability. Um, so with that, we ran and we went to one star and we went to two star and we kept going to events and we kept casting the same vision to our new customers like, hey, oh my gosh, I'm getting my products paid for. I showed, you share, they share, you plus two, they, you know, all that every single time. Why? Because I was so pumped. I paid for preschool. Like I was like, 
this is like free money. You just tell people if they're going to share. But if you don't open your mouth, you're never going to earn money. You're just not. You might get a pin here and there, which again is great. It's all good. But I've stressed to our team and Darlene, I know can attest to this. Like you got to, everyone has to open your mouth, right? Like anyone. So the first thing, if people aren't making money or not where they want to be, like how often are you talking about the money, right? Because you don't know, we, you, you might've heard this 50 times. You don't know what happens behind closed doors, but you really don't, right? And then who are we to say, we know better than they do, right? To not give them the option. And so that was always my thing at the very end. I'd say, hey, really quick, I'm gonna show you how you can earn free product, right? Here, I can show you if you have any bills, like there's ways to earn money. This is what I'm doing, right? So I gave them like, this is what I'm doing. Like this may be for you, may not. Uh, and then I always talked about isobody, right? So if they don't wanna open their mouth, at least get them into the isobody. It's free money and it gets you a customer for 16 weeks, right? The products do the job. So as we were running, again, everyone that came on our team, we talked to, we would host once a month meetings in our house. <laughs> and I know COVID's different, but maybe Zooms you can do. And it started with like my one neighbor, right? And then she had some people and I had some more people. And then we grew to like four people talking about business. And then at that time we had little. So we had like house parties with kids and whiteboards and all of that. And it was just fun and it was messy, <laughs> but we did it anyway. And so I just want to encourage you, if you feel like you've fallen away from that, it is messy. It is wonky. It's not convenient <laughs> when you're trying to build a side business or a full business. It's just not, uh, but make it fun because sometimes you can lose the fun factor. I've always said this, like once the fun's gone, like you, you show it, <laughs> it comes off of you. If you're not having fun or if you're in desperate need of a sale, people can see that and they don't want to be around it. So really quickly, I know we have like 12 minutes left. Here is my takeaways. Um, like I said, I've earned multiple six figures over the eight years. It still blows my mind. And I always want to remind people, dream big, but stay focused on the little things first. I knew that I knew. And you look in your back office on your um, weekly summary, like the cycles each week. We all started with zeros each week. We all did. There's no one that came in and had 50 cycles like the first week. You just can't, right? And I remember like, okay, my first goal is to get ones, right? Like I was like, I just want a one cycle a week, you know? And it would be like one, one, zero, one. I was like, yes, okay, almost there. And so I like those little steps encouraged me. Maybe you operate differently, but I didn't go like, I need to replace my corporate income. That was not me at first. Maybe you guys are, but if you're not there yet, start Start with something small that's meaningful, right? Like what's the driving why? Why would you host a launch party? Why would you pick up your phone call, right? And if you don't have the driving why, that's okay, but then don't expect an income. And make sure your team knows that too, right? If you don't have a driving why, like I would say, like you don't have to build for my sake or I don't need to have a why for your sake, but like if you're trying to earn money and you're upset you don't have it, I usually go back to what's your driving why. So First step, dream big, focus on what drives you. If you feel like, okay, I've kind of marked my T's, I kind of feel good where I am, help your team as well. So as soon as you start having customers and teammates, yes, have your driving why, but make sure your team why is driving you, right? I always say like, I'm gonna run with the runners of my team, right? Even if I'm not running hard in that season, if there's people that have major goals and they're showing up for me each week, I will still run with them. Does that make sense? But if, and I check my isopulse, so I see who's actively enrolling, right? That's how I gauge my um, interaction with our team, right? Cause I'm like, I know my team knows that I'm here anytime, right? But I wanna work with the people that are willing to work. Otherwise it gets really exhausting, right? And I say that with everyone, as you build teams, you'll realize like, how long do you hold hands versus like, hey, just come back when you're ready, right? Like that's like, come back when you're ready, it's fine. And it's very freeing on their end and it's freeing on your end too, when you have very clear communication. Um, so dream big, focus on yourself, focus on your team, right? The driving factor. Number two, make those vision boards. Like I said, make it current, right? So again, if you're like, okay, this is what's driving me. Do you have it picture posted in front of you all the time? I know Barbie said hers is right behind her. Um, we're packing. Otherwise I would show you my first vision board. It was like that bright blue poster board from Target, like awkwardly blue. Um, in our living room, because one of the first events we went to, and these are all like the jargons that at the time were like, that's so good. But it was the no BV in TV, like there's no BV in TV. 
And before Isogenics, Andy and I were that couple, pre-kids watching Dancing with the Stars, right? The Bachelor, like, oh my gosh, how many hours we sat on the couch makes me want to throw up now. <laughs> but that's like, that was the phase of like, we're married, we're young, we worked all day and, you know, like, anyway. So my point was we put it by our TV for that reason, because it was like, Laura, you pick, right? And if you know me, I'm very, I have a high belief system, right? So I, I have like this or this, right? TV or you get your BV. And that motivated me. Some people might think that's really harsh or like terrible, but that motivated me. So you got to know what motivates yourself. Um, but it was awesome because it was in our main living room. So when people would come over just for fun or families, they're like, what is this? I'm like, oh, my awkward blue board. Yeah, because that's like, <laughs> I just picked out blue. I don't know why. Um, but it had everything on there that we were so pumped about. Like it had at that time, we were not tithing for church. We have a huge faith. Um, we weren't fully tithing 10%. And I, when people ask, like, what would you dream of? Like, oh my gosh, I would love that. Plus cash flow, right? Like, to be honest. So, like, I wrote the word 10% with a cross. Like, I knew what that meant. The average person looking might not. Um, but I would explain it. My husband wanted a boat. We wanted to pay off student loan debt. I wanted a, um, we live in Minnesota. I wanted like a car starter, you know, like just random stuff where it's like, I felt like, not that I didn't deserve it, but I was like, I, I can get by. But it's like, I, I can have a $200 auto start. Like what if, but I had to put it all out there. And so slowly we just checked off the boxes of, I call it like that annoying, annoying debt, right? So it's like the student loan debt, a car payment. Once we paid for preschool, it was like, okay, now what? And something, I can't remember where I learned this, if someone recognizes it, it was, it's called a money map, right? If you're gonna get blessed with money, where is it going to go? And you need to predetermine that because you're not going to get, you're not going to receive money if you don't know where it's going. So on the back of these doors, not today, but before we're moving, we have big poster charts and we would write like at the top, like we have huge face. I'd write God, right? Like he's our front and center, but then we'd have, what do you call it? Like brain maps coming out. Like, okay, here's where our money's going. Right. And like for contribution, we would have our church. We would have feed my starving children. Uh, we sponsor two kids, right? So we slowly built like, okay, Lord, if we get blessed with more money through Isogenics, I know exactly where we're going to put it. Does that make sense? And that created intention. And also it drove us because we could make check marks like, oh my gosh, when we sponsor sponsored our first girl, you know, overseas, I'm like, yes. And then we were making more like, let's grab another one, you know, like, and we did two girls because I have two boys at home, but I grew up in a family of four, two boys and two girls. So that's like the reasoning behind that for me. Not saying anyone needs to adopt or sponsor kids, but that motivated me. Um, so get your vision board updated. And if it's one thing right now, if you're like, I need to pay off this, or I need to pay off a credit card, or I need whatever it is, make it one thing. Have one vision board with like that one thing. You don't need a lot on it. It's the one thing that drives you, or maybe three things that drive you. Um, or my third thing is running partner. Make sure you find the right running partner. So in this fall harvest season, um, we used to use the word run, hustle, all of that, and that you do get burnout. If you talk to any executive across the board, you're gonna experience burnout. Um, I'm trying to build more intentionally with that long-term mindset, right? Of it's not always a hustle, Kelly said something once like, grace can do more than hustle can. And I was like, yes, I love that. And so, but at the same time, you also have to work hard. So you can call it a hustle if that motivates you, if that demotivates you, just say work hard, right? Work hard, play harder. So find the words that actually entice you to work your best or show up your best. Um, and that's different for everyone. So I don't want to tell you what that is, but put it on your board, right? Like the words that make you to work, like it's worth the late night grind, grind. or like I have a card that says like, go the extra mile, nobody goes there, right? So it's just those little things that will prompt you to be like, okay, I got this, I can do this. Um, okay, four minutes. Number four, um, take ownership. My team knows this over and over. I always say, put the CEO hat on you. Stop waiting for your sponsor or your upline to do something. Um, you can make your phone calls. You can make your list. You can um, create little text challenges if you only have like three people join you. Like create your own thread, right? Like it doesn't have to be somewhere, but take ownership, take ownership. Are you posting in your product pages every single day or once a week or twice a week, right? It's really basic stuff, but at the same time, if you're not taking ownership or if you're not teaching your team to take ownership, um, that will affect your income as well. If your goal is trying to build income. Um, 
when you're planning out for this harvest run, right, with Kelly's team this fall, tell your friends, tell your family that you're going to be putting more hours towards isogenics, right? That was something I did not do early on. I just thought people, they knew I was building isogenics. And so my brain for business was like, well, if you're building something, it's going to take a lot of time, right? And they all felt like, I wasn't showing up for friendships, right? And I was like, no, like I'm working. If I had a brick and mortar bakery, I would be there at 4 a.m. to like 6 p.m., right? And so it was explaining expectations. So I just want to encourage you, if you haven't done it or if it's been a while, uh, make sure you talk to anyone in your household and or family members or friends that you talk to a lot that maybe you won't be in touch as much because you're going to be making phone calls and doing meetings. Um, know your numbers. I'm super passionate. This is all under being like ownership. Know your numbers. If you want to hit director, right? How many consultants is that? How many conversations is that? Are you ready to put in the effort for it? Because it, you don't just randomly fall into director. You don't fall into executive. <laughs> it's very intentional. So again, if you need help on that, if you've never been around someone or coached on it, let someone know. Um, but there is a way to actually prep and plan to hit those ranks. Um, and it takes time, but you need to know your numbers. And when I say that, you might say, okay, if I talk to, if I enroll 10 people, one or two of those might pop consultant, right? So maybe you need to enroll a hundred people and you'll have 10 consultants, right? Based on your closing ratio and all of that. Um, so just kind of know those numbers so you don't get defeated. Does that make sense? Because if you know the real numbers, it's like, oh, I still have 90 conversations to go or I need 90 more enrollments until I hit executive, right? Like it just helps the process when you understand it. Um, oh yeah, and then leverage with your team, right? If you're running, do your customers know about promos happening? Can you throw promos at your customers? Absolutely, right? If some one of your consultants has fallen off, Throw an incentive like, hey, what's your favorite shake? You know, like if you enroll two more people next week, I'll give you a full shake canister, right? Create the incentives, put that business owner hat on and really think about how do I create five and five, right? Five consultants here, five consultants here. Um, I also talk about a skeleton, like um, the skeleton of your tree, right? If you've had consultants before and they've fallen off, I always tell my team, if I'm running with someone, I'm like show me your skeleton. Who do we have to work with for framework? Who can we bring back? right? Like maybe you had six consultants, you're down to two, like are those four, <laughs> can they come back to life, right? Can we help pop them back or do we just have two to work with? Um, and the last one I'm going to talk about, um, talk about money to every customer. I said that before, but this is my recap. Make sure every single time you're planting a seed. It doesn't have to be perfect. All you need to know is have them remember, oh, I can make money with Laureate Isogenics. That's all my goal is. They don't need to know 360, 240, you know, 50 pibs, $100 pibs. Don't, like, they don't need to know that. I just want them to know, like, I, uh, wow, there was a lot of money on the table. That's all I want them to know. I don't, they don't need to remember anything else because that will peak their interest. Like, okay, my friend is interested. You said there's money. Can you tell me again? There has to be another conversation. But my goal is to make sure they know that they know that they can earn referral rebates and part time, full, com full time income. So I'm going to repeat those really quick because I know it's 7 30. So, number one, dream big. Focus on what you're driving, what driving you, and then focus if you have a team or customers, talk to them and make sure you know what their current focus is so you understand where they're at. Um, number two, build your new vision board for the season. What is it now that's driving you this many years in, right? Or this many months in, what's driving you now? Number three, find your running partner, right? Equal account number, equal running partner. Number four, take ownership in every area. Know your time and hours, talk to your family, know your numbers, ask your leader for help if you don't know your numbers and how to get there. Number five, talk to people about the money. That's intentional. So those are my five takeaways. Um, there's many more about gratitude journals and all of that, that that's a great thing to stay grounded of like, I am so dang grateful for my $54 today, right? Because if you're not grateful and you're always like, oh, I cycled once this month, right? why do you think you deserve two cycles that month? <laughs> you know, like if you're not grateful for the one, you're not going to get two. And if you're not grateful for the two, you're not going to get five. And that's, that's real life. That's just, that's just real life in all areas. So any questions? And I know we try to keep it 30 minutes. So that was fast. I hope you got what I was saying. If you have any questions, let me know.
No, I just want to chime in. I think that was fantastic. I have like a front and back full of post-it notes. I'm always learning from you, Lori. So that was fabulous. I will say that I wrote down when you said go the extra mile, nobody goes there. I mean, that is like going on my vision board right in the center. So thank you for that. I'm sure other people took little golden nuggets. Um, If anybody has any questions, you can pop them in the chat really quick. I just, a little bit of housekeeping before we hop off for the night. This call series is continuing. The summer call series is ending. We're moving into a fall call series, but the call is moving to 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on Mondays. Um, So just know that the calls are gonna continue, but the uh, time is being adjusted. We just have gotten some feedback that we think the later time will allow for more people to be here live and in person. Um, If you have not plugged into Impact Makers and all the information for the harvest, you want to be sure you get your 90 day game plan printed. Um, there's a link for that that was reposted in the Harv- in Impact Makers. If you need direction on finding that, you can message me. I will be happy to tag you so that you have all of the information as the harvest is kicking off next week. Lori, I am so full of gratitude. You are um, in the process of moving and kicking off homeschooling and all the things that you carved out um, this time. And you're always so well prepared and you always provide such tremendous value in business, in life, in friendship, in all things. So thank you so much. I am abundantly grateful for you. And you guys, I hope you have a wonderful week. Yes. And I want to say dream big because we're moving to Florida. If you know me for any second, (laughs) like since I was five, I was like born for the beach and warmth and sunshine. And I've always dreamed it. I didn't know how I was going to get there, but God knew, right? And the fact that Icy Junks came into my life and I said yes for preschool, Little did I know this would help build our funds to get to Florida. And so I just think that's like anything that's so far off in your brain, keep it there. Like don't ever lose hope, right? Because it's it's planted in you for a reason. And so I'm still like in a weird awe of like, just I'm doing a lot of to-do lists, like to get moving, but it's like, holy cow. Like I'm actually, like even my parents are like, you're doing it. I was like, I'm doing it. Like it's like everyone's knowing it, but like we're actually, doing it like now is the time right and I just want to say that to you guys too like now is the time to start pursuing those dreams whether they're little preschool dream budget bills um or adopting a kid or whatever that is um those seeds are in you for a reason and you definitely can accomplish them through isogenics 100 percent so have a great night